the, the information that was out there uh, last night I gave you is uh, on on JW and and Justin Horton is uh, to to kind of move forward to to eliminate the questions when when a young man or young men for in this situation um, are you know probably not going to play the rest of the year and uh, probably because you never really know anything could happen but as I see it uh, very very difficult to come back from the type of injuries that uh, that these guys have in, within the next six weeks so I want to get that out there and there's really nothing else to say I I don't go into detail on the type of injury just because if it were one of my sons, I wouldn't want somebody discussing the type of injury that they have. That's just my personality, uh, not trying to hide anything. Uh, but I think the most important uh, information is is that those guys um, won't be able to play in the games and, and we move forward from this point on. Uh, the other guys that have been nicked up, we're trying to get them ready and they're practicing. Uh, the quarterback situation, we have um, Wes Lunt who's practiced. Um, and we have Clint Shelf, and what we're going to do is we have enough reps for both of them to get quality work in order to play on Saturday because we do move so fast in practice that it gives us a chance to get guys enough work, and you, all, you guys are familiar with Wes. Um, for those of you that aren't, Clint's you know, a lot like JW in, in the way he plays, and he throws it and play passes and can run it some, and, and that's really where we're at. There's not any other information. Uh, I'm, I'm very proud of what JW um, has given our football team. Uh, I'm disappointed that for him that he, he can't continue to play. Um, he, he competed on about 70 plays, give or take a few, after he had the injury that he has right now. Uh, guy's got a very high tolerance of pain. I made a, uh, a comment this morning on my Big 12 call or I don't know what call it was, but that, you know, I'm reading the book on Navy SEALs and what they go through to be able to to actually be a SEAL and how much pain they have to endure and continue to move forward. And that's what it reminded me of. And I'm not trying to make him out to be something other than what he is, but I think people need to realize that the guys that play this game put their body on the line every Saturday. And uh, we as coaches – and fans and media that follow these guys need to respect that. And we have guys that play with pain. He's more visible because he's a quarterback. But what he was able to do Saturday after sustaining that injury um, is, is pretty impressive. And so that's a credit to him and what he is and who he sta what he stands for and who he is. Is that more impressive, I guess, for JW because he comes from a tough family, his dad, the coach, and he's trying to – push along the time frame that he expects his son, but you wouldn't expect anything less from a, a father to say that and also being a coach. Well, they should be proud of him. I had a, a conversation with uh, with Coach Walsh uh, yesterday, and uh, it's difficult. It's difficult for JW. It's difficult for his family. It's difficult for us. It was the same way with Wes Lunt when I had a discussion with his family. Uh, but some of us are fortunate and come from a, a, a good family and good upbringing and a coach's son if it's athletic and some people aren't. We've had guys, you know, Justin Horton has given us everything for years. He, he, he injures himself and takes three more steps and makes a great catch after he had already injured himself. So I'm just trying to give an example of how proud I am of the guys and what they do on Saturdays and they lay it all on the line for us. And we as coaches and fans should be proud of what we've got out there and what they're giving us. Typically, what can that do? Because they're not obviously going to be able to play, but what kind of impact does that end up having on the rest of the team moving forward? Uh, not jokingly, Kevin, you guys are going to have to get me like a towel or a, uh, uh, or a somebody. I don't care. I hate to beat up here, powder up. I need some powder. I mean, I, I like, like a napkin or something. I didn't uh, anticipate it being 85 degrees. Um, what, what he brings... You know what you know. You talking about for the team? Yeah, well, the, the residual impact that it has gotten your other guys see those two and basically sacrifice the rest of the season in their company. And, and I made a point, John, after the practice last night with the team that in order for our organization, our team to continue to get better, the the, the overall concept has to be unselfish football team and do whatever it takes within reason. 
And I made a point that we've had guys that couldn't compete. For example, when Wes got hurt, when Justin got hurt, they were unstable. He wasn't unstable, but had an enormous amount of pain. And so he continued to fight through it. And I made an example of that with the team. And that's when you're young, those are things you have to learn. It's the greatest game there is for life lessons because there's pain in our lives at times and we have to fight through them. Maybe not all physically, maybe mentally, but uh, you know, it is what it is. You got to give credit where credit's due. Um, I thought that our offensive line was very physical. That we were not poor, but below average at Kansas. And I think they took it as a challenge. They were teasing me all week about, coach, you think we practiced hard enough today? I said, I don't know. I know you didn't when we played Kansas. Uh, and they were more physical. Joe Randall played physical. Uh, we had some drop passes that we need to get corrected. Some of them are by young receivers. They'll be better in the next game. Um, defensively, uh, fantastic. And playing defense and coaching defense in the Big 12 is week to week. Uh, you got to have a good plan. You got to be fresh. You got to be active. You got to run to the ball. You got to tackle. Uh, you got to be resilient because other guys are going to make some plays. But we had a number of guys uh, D. Lowe, um, uh, Cooper Bassett, Barnett. Broderick Brown played with a lot of energy. Shamil Gary gave us some energy. It was nice to get Lindale back. So, you know, I'm just kind of filling you in on where we are after that game. Uh, moving forward, uh, this is a good team we're playing. Um, sometimes records and, and uh, the overall uh, ranking, for lack of a better term, may not indicate who we're playing. This is a fast football team. Uh, these guys have recruited skill. Uh, they're giving up about 17.3 points a game if you take away the, the touchdowns in overtime. Uh, only three yards a rush. They've almost doubled the amount of sacks that they're giving up. Uh, they've held their opponent to 26% on third downs. Uh, they're playing with a, a, a new quarterback uh, who now is gaining some experience and, and is, looks more comfortable in my opinion. Um, and they've had success over the years and, and they're well coached. This is a good football team. So. Uh, anybody that's uh, purchased season tickets or is going to watch it on TV uh, ought to be excited because this will, this will be a good one. Mike, you haven't been absolute, but normally you've kind of had injured players up in the stands, not on the sidelines, and it's tight anyway, so you don't have a lot of room. But because of the way the quarterbacks support each other, are you, I mean, even if he's on crutches or has to be, would you be receptive to Walsh being down there just because of his. It'll be difficult, end? Robert. Uh, if we were on the road, it'd be much easier, but uh, Tracy Moore wasn't down there Saturday that I know of. Mm -hmm. Guys that are on crutches uh, are not in a good situation on our sideline. And they, it clears fast, and they come off there fast. And um, we need him around, but I don't know if that's what's best for him. He certainly can't afford to get that, that hit again right now. TCU leads the conference in rushing defense. Um, what makes your rushing defense so effective? They're, they're fast and, and they're well coached and um, they're physical. They've, uh, they've recruited, we go head to head with them in recruiting a lot. They recruit a, a number of the same players we do and they develop them and bring them along and they fit their system. He's been there now for how long? I don't know. How long, anybody know how long he's been there? He's been there a long time. His system's in place, and that's what he buys into, and he's a defensive guy. They do a good job of coaching him. They do a good job of recruiting him. It is kind of interesting. You mentioned that. You play him now here for the first time in your tenure, and you know, going back to Kendall Hunter. I mean, there have been a bunch of guys that you guys have gone tug-of-war on. They really have. Uh, in recruiting, we see him a lot, and, um, and Coach Patterson's cordial to me, and I'm cordial to him, and we're trying to watch guys, and I'm not telling him who I'm looking at, and he's not telling me who he's looking at. Uh, because sometimes we look at players other schools don't. Uh, but like I said, it's, uh, it's another week in the Big 12, and you've uh, got to be prepared, you got to be fresh, you got to have a good plan, you got to play with great effort, you got to take care of the football. Coach, is it a situation where you have Wes, he gets hurt, you change your game plan a little bit with, to suit JW, now he's out, Wes is coming back. Do you just go back to the game plan you use with Wes, or – does that worry you a little bit with the knee? Well, we're, we're concerned about it uh, because you can't have so many plays you're not good at any of them, which we know that. 
and they're they're two different style of players, but we have to have enough of both based on who we feel like Thursday's practice give us the best chance for success. TCU lost to Iowa State at home 37 23. Does that film and does that information hold a lot more weight as you guys game plan? They have five turnovers. And, and Iowa State took advantage of and hit some big plays on them. And Iowa State's a good team also. Uh, but, I mean, I'm, that's what happened. Okay. And, you you know, I'm not trying to speak for, for Coach Patterson's team, and I'm not trying to – I'm just giving you my opinion, and I'm going to guess that he's going to probably feel the same way, uh, that when you turn the ball over multiple times, when we were at Arizona, we turned it over so many times we quit counting. When that happens, you're probably not going to win in most cases. Coach, can you talk a little bit about Patterson's defense? That's kind of his background, and they, they're they're an interesting scheme. They're not they're not a defense like you see every week in this league. Yeah, he's always um, played in that uh, fast safety double invert, and they move those guys around, and then uh, two inside backers. And he's actually made a few adjustments, in my opinion, from what I see, than what he's had from years ago. But his concepts have stayed the same, and. Uh, They've had success, in my opinion, from an outsider looking in based on speed and running to the ball. Do you think the KW had any idea how bad he was hurt during the game or he was just a gamer and wasn't going to tell anybody how bad he was hurting? I think that he was in a lot of pain and is trained mentally to not come out. Um, if he had instability, we would have had to take him out. But otherwise, he's not going to come out. But I, I know that he had the pain because when it happened, I could tell because he's been here long enough that I know, about, I know his demeanor and his facial expressions. Uh, but I don't think he ever asked, how bad is it? Because he's, he's not trained that way. He's, he's trained to, to go play and, and do what it takes to have success, and that's what he did. Does it shock you the guys in the huddle with him? I mean, they're not really in the huddle. I guess they were in the fourth quarter. He huddled up some. But uh, Lane Taylor, Charlie, even Josh Stewart, who's lived with him before, said during the game they, they, they couldn't tell. He hit it from them. I, I don't think that, uh, that he gave any indication other than the first three or four plays afterwards. There was a grimace and a kind of a, a sign of pain. But other than that, he moved forward and just kind of played. And my concern, when it happened, I thought he was hurt. And then my concern as the game went on was, one, how serious, and two, whether it was going to tighten up on him over on the sidelines. Saturday will be the first time this program has played TCU in almost 20 years. And what's the challenge in preparing for someone that you're not familiar with? Well, we are very familiar with them, really, because we see them a lot. And um, we, we know who they are. We recruit the same players. And uh, their philosophies haven't really changed that much. We, you know, we mentioned their defense earlier, and their offense is we're going to spread you out, run speed option, run some reverses, play pass, run inside zone, read zone, throw the ball down the field, run some nakeds, get on the perimeter. Uh, that part stayed pretty consistent. Coach, you talked about challenging your offensive line to be more physical after the Kansas game. Is that something? that you're going to have to have the rest of the way, and does that have any bearing on who the quarterback is? you mind if I take my shirt off? <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I mean, really, I mean, I know, honestly, I showered. I mean, I just, you know. Um, uh, we'll have to cut the cameras off to do that. And, and then anything, it's just like Vegas. Whatever leaves here stays here. Uh, uh, with those guys, Coach Wick does a great job of challenging them each week. Um, I embarrassed you. I didn't mean that directly at you. I was kind of talking, <laughs> kind of talking to everybody. Uh, co co to. Yeah, yeah. Now you're getting warm too. Right? Co Coach Wick does a great job of challenging those guys. He stays on them. And um, uh, other than our two tackles who are new, but they've been in our program, they know what it, what we expect. And you know, I thought all last week of why why did they not play physical? And I couldn't figure out a reason why. And the only thing I go back to, it's, it's like when you raise kids at home. Why in the world would you do that? Because they're a kid. Well, they're kind of kids, even though they're big ones. So hopefully we can get them to perform and play at a high level. Because if we don't, in this game won't be as fun on Saturday.
Nothing personal, but if that comment finds its way to Sports Center, I think it'll help your recruiting. <laughs> you know, I didn't even think about that. It was not the first time I didn't think about that. <laughs> yeah. Now they'll all, yeah, they'll put a poll up with, does America want his shirt off or does America want his shirt on? <laughs> Trust me, America wants his shirt on. So. Schedule's heating up here, but yeah, that's exactly right. It's definitely heating up. Um, I think Kevin's on the most worried. Yeah. You know, I didn't get this in on the teleconference last night, but there are two teams left at this stage in the season who totally control their own destiny to mm -hmm. win the Big 12. Obviously, Kansas State. And because Texas has dropped back behind you and you have K-State ahead, you're the only other team that needs no help at all if you can find a way to win them all. Well, no question. Easier said than done. Uh, I think the interesting concept with our with our league right now is we would all agree that Kansas State is ahead of everybody, and uh, you know not not that I'm going to sit here and comment on the entire league. I think Oklahoma's played pretty well lately. They they've gained some ground, uh, and then you know the rest of us um, for the way we're playing, I think you got to limit your mistakes. You got to play with effort. You got to try to stay as healthy as possible, uh, and. Offensively, it's all about big plays, and then defensively, it's about forcing turnovers. And that, that's the fun thing with our league right now for fans and, and media, and not so fun for coaches. Uh, superstitions during games. Uh, during the TCU's game last weekend, they kept showing Gary Patterson tying his shoes, and, and over time, he's tying them every 30 seconds. That's his nervous habit. Pulls up his pants. What, what do you do on the sideline if you're nervous, or do you have game day superstitions you do on the sideline during games? Well, I, I flip my switch on and off if I get tired of hearing Munkin cuss. <laughs> I go the other deal because Bill Young's just as calm as all, and it's peaceful for me. And uh, then I flip it back and forth. Uh, you know, it's funny that you mention that because I saw it. And uh, I've never really watched TCU play an entire game because they weren't in our league, and I just didn't. When they played in the Rose Bowl, whatever year it was, I just happened to be watching something else. And so I don't think I've really ever watched them play on TV. And I, I thought, whoever that equipment manager is, that got to get him some shoestrings that stay tied. And I was going to give him a hard time about that, but you, you spilled the beans on me there. So, But th they happened to show him doing that like four or five times. And just happened to be on it when he was doing that. So, um, And he was using a towel, too. Just It was just like this. So... Now, some of the players said that they noticed that sometimes in close games you'll you have to stare. Do you just naturally do that, or is that just something they're you know I I, I I don't know how to answer that because I don't really haven't really watched myself, uh, and maybe I'm thinking and uh, wondering how I got here and how I'm going to get out of here and what I'm going to say. Uh, I'm not sure how that happens, but uh, I enjoy listening to our coaches on the headsets. And I, I don't talk very much, uh, have very, I give very little input, but I enjoy the comments and the coaching and the strategy and just the different things that, uh, that are part of uh, game day experience. You know, I heard, uh, I was driving in my car the other day on Friday or I don't know, Thursday or something, and I sometimes I flip it on 91 to listen to uh, Coach Hawkins because uh, I like to listen to him. So I think he's a smart guy and he's got good information and good knowledge pertaining to team concepts. And they had uh, Les on there, Coach Miles. And uh, he ended his, his interview by saying he just enjoys a fall day and the, the sun and the wind and being out there on game day and just enjoys college football and his family. And that's all he thinks about. And I got to thinking that's kind of the way it is. You know, We're fortunate to be in this situation. We're fortunate to be coaches of teams that compete every Saturday and we have kids that play hard like what the examples I gave earlier and it, what else could a guy want to do and uh, so I don't really think much about it but I do enjoy the actual game situation even in tight situations. One of the things that's come up more this year in this league because of the competitiveness is going forward on fourth downs. Mm -hmm. You mentioned your input. How quickly in your mind do you make those decisions on we're going to punt, we're going to kick a field goal, we're going to go for it? Before the fourth down on the third down. We need to be better on fourth downs. We're not good enough on third and short, and we're not good enough on fourth and short. Hey, Mike, who is uh, responsible? Because I've noticed 
all the venues we've been to the last two or three years, college football, the, the play calling posters are becoming more and more creative. Like this Saturday, you guys had one with James Harden face on his beard and a Star Wars character. Or no, I think that's not Star Wars. Uh, I can't remember what it was. Who, who comes? You up talking with about those big boards? Yeah, that's Jeff Napar, video guy. He's not on Star Wars. <laughs> yeah. That's who you're talking about. I think that, yeah, well, okay, yeah. That's yeah, that's Pitt. That's impressive. Mm -hmm. I didn't say that. He, he, uh, he resembles from a distance based on how far you are away and, and how the signs tilted with the resolutions that uh, Chucka, what's the little uh, guy that was on Star Wars? He kind of looks like Chucka a little bit. <laughs> With those boards, uh, I don't have a clue what those mean. <laughs> they change them each week, and I ask them, and they, they don't want to tell me because they said they don't want anybody to find out. So, anyway. Kevin, you done? I'm, yeah. Beautiful. <laughs> That's all I'm going to take a shot.